Through These Doors is sponsored by Shields. Winter fashion is a wonderland, and you'll find all this season's best looks waiting for you at Shields. So, let it snow. Uh, studying accounting finally here. It's going pretty well, actually. Last one of the semester. How do you think you're going to do on it? Good enough. well-known foe in the form of the Denver Pioneers brought with them the challenge of strong goaltending on Friday night. With a gritty game-tying goal in the second, Corbin Knight extended his streak to 10 games in a row in which he had captured at least one point. Yeah, it was just... Simmer got it through from the point and uh, I was just kind of scrambling front and just kind of hacked at it and I didn't even know it went in until I heard the horn go off and I guess it's one of those things where you get pucks on net and good things happen. Despite many scoring chances, UND was never able to secure a lead. The Pioneers goaltender Yuho Okinura secured a 2-2 tie by stopping 31 shots on net. You know, we, we, we generated some opportunities and you know, I thought we gave ourselves every chance. Um, you know, and their guy, their guy goal was real good tonight. After struggling early on Friday night, Rocco Grimaldi had one of his best games of the season. Great chemistry tonight, I thought, and, and it's great for me just being on the wing now, just getting more comfortable. Obviously, I had no idea what's going on, you know, when I when I went over uh, last week because you know, I've been a center my whole life, so uh, it's a little adjustment for me. But you know, all of a sudden, you know, things are clicking, and hopefully, you know, that's going to continue for the rest of the year here. After an even 1-1 score at the end of the first. North Dakota took a commanding 4-1 lead before Denver buried two power play goals. Well, we put ourselves in a good position at that point in time. We hadn't given up very much. Um, you know, we, we obviously, you know, had found a way to gain the momentum, uh, but we gave that back pretty quickly with, you know, with, with an unfortunate play. But UND wasn't quite done. The home team put the final nail in the coffin with a goal from Danny Cristo and an empty netter setting a final score of 6-3. to three. Yeah, we did have a better start. That's, that's not a very good way to start. Um, obviously, it puts everybody back on its heel, uh, back on their heels. Uh, you know, it takes the, 
takes the uh, the energy out of the building. Uh, but we recovered from that. You know, we had a you know, we had a decent first period, tied it up, and uh, we just moved forward from there. In collegiate hockey, players face not only the challenges of a long season, but also the trials of a full class schedule. And for this team, finals week is no different than any other student's exam week. Uh, they they went well. I just finished my last one this morning, so it's always a stressful time of year, but when you get them done with, it's always a relief, so it's nice that they're over. Well, it's a new learning experience for everybody, but that's part of growing up. You know, you have to learn to, uh, you know, to compartmentalize different things in your life. And we've asked guys to come to the rink, uh, provide us with one good hour on the ice each day this week, uh, and beyond that, turn their focus back to their academics, back to their finals, final exams. Take a lot of pride in uh, in our team and uh, how successful we are academically. And uh, I think our guys have been very focused and done a good job. Uh, on separating the two thus far this week. Older players such as Corbin Knight have figured out how to handle weeks like this where the younger guys are still learning. I think Chiswick needs the most help. I know that Smalls takes some joke classes, but I think Chiswick overall has the worst GPA, but I think Kajula kind of rides his coattails a little bit. It's always tough, but I find now that I'm a senior, I've kind of learn from my past mistakes and hopefully that kind of helps out but uh, I guess we'll see when the final grades come in how my semester went. So. Uh, final week's actually pretty good. I only had two exams on Monday so I was done on Monday night. The woes of final week have taken their toll but this is a team that has been able to hold impressive academic standards in past years. I don't know. Like Simmer's got to be up there and maybe maybe Nider. Max said your, your apartment is usually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tate, I think tastes pretty good too. So. Wow, well, you know, it may sound funny, but I think we've had a couple guys that supplanted Brad, and uh, I might have to go back and look at my notes. But I know that uh, Dylan Simpson and Nick Matson have, have uh, certainly given Brad a run for his money the last few years. So uh, I guess uh, the good money would be on those two guys. But we've got a lot of guys that are. Uh, taking a lot of pride, doing a great job in the classroom, and pushing hard to finish up the first semester the right way. UND travels to the northernmost parts of Michigan to take on Michigan Tech in Houghton. On Wednesday, the guys have a late practice, after which they hit the road on a two-day road trip. Uh, right now it is... It's gotta be 6:37. Uh, so usually, you know, practice at uh, you know 2:45 to about you know 4 o'clock. But uh, we had to adjust our schedule today because uh, everyone's finals. But uh, right now, I'll probably just do a little bit of video and then uh, head on the bus to the boys. The bus rolls in as the team continues to practice, ready to take them to face a tough and willing Michigan Tech squad. I don't really like packing. Just like putting stuff back in my stall. Probably in like half hour or so. Yeah, a little film and then. What are you guys expecting out of Michigan Tech? They're always really hard to play against. They're always tough and stuff. So. Yeah, they got big D, big tall D. That take up a lot of room, so we have to use our speed against those guys for sure. Use your blazing speed. Against. My blazing speed, yeah. yeah. I love the trip up to Michigan Tech. It's always challenging. Uh, I think it's a great town uh, uh, for college hockey. You know, the people there uh, treat us extremely well and they're, they're excited about the games on the weekend. Uh, and as I said in the, in the press conference, our games up there have uh, traditionally been very tight, very close. And, and I think against this year's Michigan Tech team, uh, it's a great challenge for our team going up there. Although having lost only two out of the last 21 meetings with the Huskies, North Dakota sees a challenge coming this weekend. Uh, always a gritty, hard-working team, uh, play physical, um, probably more uh, one of the more veteran teams in the league, older guys, so uh, obviously got to come ready to play, uh, especially when we're going to their building. So. If North Dakota can pull off a sweep this weekend, they are in position to jump ahead in the polls. After taking three out of four points from a first-place Denver team, UND will be poised to enter into the second half on a roll.